What's going on my fellow Kino Lord? So tonight I'm going to be reviewing Night of the Living Dead, which is a film that came out in 1968 that's written and directed by George A. Romero. So Night of the Living Dead is a $50 patron request from Tyree. He has continued to give me $50 every single month for, it feels like, almost two years now. And I just, I, I think I've fallen in love. And I can fall in love with you too, if you would also like to join him and request movies you want me to watch and review. So Not of the Living Dead was a film that I was incredibly excited to revisit, because this is a film that I saw in like the early stages of film school, which had to be like at least eight or, like eight or more years ago. And I, for the life of me, don't remember hardly anything about this movie. There's a few like prominent scenes in the movie that I recalled on my rewatch here, but other than that, like, my memory is beyond foggy. I, I didn't even remember the ending to this movie. So, boy, was I in for a fucking treat at the end of this movie. Needless to say, I mean, this really felt like a first-time watch to me, and I, I, I adored this movie. This movie is masterful. I, I did not expect to love this movie that much, because, I mean, like, the zombie subgenre of horror is not something that I've always just been deeply in love with. But I don't know. There's so much about this movie that I found just so compelling, so impressive. Um, you know, especially considering like how low of a budget this movie was made for. I mean, um, I mean, from what I understand, it was made for like less than a hundred grand and it made like 30 times its budget back. I mean, that. That is like a dream come true for any aspiring filmmaker. And there's something about the horror genre that I love so much that is able to achieve that. Because it's horror is something that you could really make on dimes and nickels. And if done right, you could become a millionaire like within a day. <laughs> so um, that, that's what I'm trying to do now, you know, wish me luck. But tragically, despite the fact that this movie made basically 30 times his budget back... Apparently, George A. Romero walked away from it with not much profit in his pocket. And that's apparently due to the fact that he was a young filmmaker, didn't have a lot of knowledge of distribution deals, as no young filmmaker does. And they basically just took advantage of him. All the investors and the distributors just completely just took advantage of him. But yeah, it's really difficult to know where to begin in discussing why I really love this movie as much as I did. I mean, I guess we could start with the fact that I think the, the ability of this movie to pretty much set like these canon type standards for what zombies are and what we know them to be in cinema today is just, I mean it's legendary. I mean basically before this movie was made, you know, it wasn't canon that, you know, zombies ate people. Um and it wasn't really canon that when you got eaten you would become a zombie. But with that being said, I feel like a lot has changed with the cultural perception of zombie behavior. <laughs> like just from the iconic opening scene alone where the zombie is chasing Barbara. I mean, the zombie is acting way more intelligent than I expected. I mean, he's like trying to open the car door using the handle. He picks up a rock, is trying to smash the window. I mean, some of it comes off as basically a fully cognitive human being that's just trying to fucking eat your face off. So in one way, it was very rewarding and interesting to see how this movie set the standard for zombie representation in cinema moving forward. But it was also, on another hand, really cool to see, like, how much zombies and our perception of them have changed. But we have to talk about the lead actor in this movie that plays the main character, Ben. Dwayne Jones is phenomenal in this movie. And what a bold casting choice of George Romero to cast a black man to lead a horror movie in 1968. I mean, this was, from what I understand like unfounded like this was uncalled for which is something that not anybody really expected and i think it was a groundbreaking choice that in my opinion has had a huge hand on how iconic the movie has become i mean of course i think if he had casted a white man this movie would still be considered great still would have been a big success but i do think that it would not have had as much staying power as it has had already. But what's even more amazing to me about it is that obviously when George Romero was asked about the casting choice, he said, he on one hand, he said that he didn't really have a race in mind, but also admits that, you know, subconsciously he's kind of pictured a white, like he pictured a white man to play this role. And it was, it was just basically based on the pure talent and the energy 
that Dwayne Jones brought to the table during the audition that he decided, I want to cast this dude. And what's crazy to me is that it's not like after they casted Dwayne Jones, they changed the narrative to make it some kind of social commentary. They kept basically the same exact script, except now there's a black man in the forefront. And it's just kind of crazy to see how representation can really affect your perception of the movie and how you read into things. Because, you know, when I was watching this movie, this is before I read anything about this movie. I just watched it without doing any research. And I just, like, I automatically assumed that George Romero was intentionally crafting, like, a social commentary about race relations in America, especially with that fucking tragic ending that we get in the movie. But, you know, that that's not really the case. It was just this guy brought his A-game, decided to cast this person, and now, like, people are writing books on it. So, yeah, it's just kind of crazy how, intentional or not, how much of a difference it could make to your film. But, I mean, even with that aside, Dwayne Jones' performance in and of itself is so good. Um, there's a monologue that he gives, like, early on in this movie when he's talking to Barbara about, like, you know, his traumatic experience of him at a gas station and experiencing, like, this huge wave of zombies and the delivery of the entire thing. Like, the emotion feels so genuine, and it makes us, as the audience really feel for the character a whole lot more. And then considering how, you know, brave and courageous and commanding he is as this lead role, like, it just, again, it's really, really easy to watch this movie and like him, despite the fact that he basically just punches Barbara in the face at one point in this movie. I mean, sure, she slapped him first, but, you know, despite him doing something that we would all kind of agree, like, yo, that's, that's pretty fucked up, we still can kind of, like, understand where he's coming from and understand that this came out at a time where that was not the craziest thing in the world to witness. But also what I love so much about this movie is that there's a huge chunk. Like I feel like a gigantic chunk of the second act has no zombie action in it. Like a huge amount of this movie's runtime is basically this movie introducing new characters to us, um, you know, showcasing these character conflicts and kind of like exploring the the human condition in a way because all these characters are in an apocalyptic survival situation and you know George Romero basically allows us as the audience to kind of perceive and analyze everyone's behavior and there's this excellent scene between Ben and I believe the other man's name is Carl in this movie um where there's this huge debate and discussion about whether or not taking you know, the actual ground level to the house is safer or choosing the basement is a safer place to be when defending yourself from the zombies outside. And again, like, I think that conversation is not only, like, really important for the movie, but that's a conversation that everybody has. That's a thought-provoking conversation to have. Like, even now till today, I'm not exactly sure which one was the safest. I mean, in a way, you could argue that Carl's way going in the basement was the safest, you know, considering the ending to this movie. But you could also say that Ben's way failed just because of the hysteria and the lack of discipline and sheer selfishness is the reason why Ben's plan of sticking to ground level really went to shit. But yeah, in that situation and in that scene, Dwayne Jones' character Ben says something so badass. You can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. That is such a badass line, and I'm probably going to be quoting that for the rest of my life now. But yeah, again, I just love how there is a huge section of this movie that is basically just dedicated to character interactions and exploring the human condition, and it's all very interesting and very compelling and consistently engaging. But I also love how throughout the second act, we see the characters watch the TV, and they slowly get revealed information about what's actually going on in this zombie apocalypse. And it's really interesting to watch this unfold, you know, as modern audiences perceiving it because we already know that, you know, whatever, a zombie attacks you, you get bit, they they try to eat you, and then if they bite you, then you turn into a zombie, and the only way to kill it is to shoot it in the head or, or cut its head off. And again, like, at the time when audiences were watching this, this was not common knowledge at all. So... It was crucial for Romero to kind of pace the movie in this way to, you know, as the characters are learning this information, the audience is also learning this information and they have no idea that they are witnessing something that is going to be like the future standard of what zombies are going to be for the rest of their lives now. And eventually we get to the third act 
And holy shit, it delivers. I mean, it is like one scene after the other, extremely intense, filled with, again, for the time, 1968, to see this level of violence and gore, I'm sure it was a little bit of a shock. Um, you know, I believe this movie came like right before, uh, the MPAA rating system, if I'm not mistaken. And I've already kind of, and I've already kind of hinted at this earlier, but I really do love how unforgiving and hopeless this movie is. It gets to a point where this movie makes it very clear that no character is safe and it makes the action and the suspense and the horror of it all really feel that much intense. And just, um, you know, the stakes are raised beyond an imaginable level. And, uh, again, it just makes the experience all that more authentic. And not to mention the stun work going on in this movie is kind of insane. I mean, especially in the finale, I mean, there's lots of fire going on, like, near the extras and near even, like, the main actors and actresses. I feel fairly confident that some people were injured during the filming of this. Um, and even, like, probably burnt because it's, they were really close to that fire, and I was like, damn. I mean, yeah, honestly, I don't really know how much more I have to say about it. This is just one of those movies, again, where it's just, like, people have already really talked their heads off about it. I don't think I'm really contributing anything new here. Um, but I can just tell you that I, I think this movie's actually masterful. Um, this might make it up there as one of my favorite horror movies of all time. So I'm gonna give Night of the Living Dead a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I mean, I can't really think of anything that I dislike about the movie. Um, I think Romero accomplished exactly what he wanted and more. And, um, I mean, clearly, like, his legacy was built off of this movie. And he's able to build even more on that with all the movies he made after this, uh, which I still need to kind of get on. I haven't seen, honestly, a lot of his movies. Um, but now after seeing this... I'm definitely going to get on that. But anyways, that's all I got to say about Night of the Living Dead. I hope everybody has a happy Halloween out there. My favorite holiday of the year. Uh, just make sure to stay safe and don't go smashing pumpkins. That's just rude. But if you really liked what I had to say about the film, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.